So in the background, there's going to be the time lapse of the full process, right? So I've just taken the video, uh, cut out a few bits, which was kind of superfluous. There was a flower that I made that ended up getting scrapped, things like this. Um, so if you want to see the full video, I will leave a link to that in the description and a card on screen. So that's a 14 hour video, 14 hour 40, I think actually. But there's a lot of great content in there, I think. It's a lot of uh, interesting, valuable information. And I, I made sure that I was quite explicit with explaining what I was doing every step. So this video is not really educational in terms of how to use geometry nodes. This is more of like my final thoughts as I come away from this project and the things that I learned that I think are valuable kind of general lessons as opposed to like plug this node into this node. So I think there were kind of four, five main things to take away. The first one being that there is a huge amount of value in creating a whole scene. And I know that a lot of 3D artists, myself included, get into this trap of making assets, single things. And it's like, oh, I really want to make a, I don't know, a toaster or an oven or uh, yeah, like single assets, right? So you, you see this a lot, people make a character or a car, whatever. And there's a huge amount of value in taking that asset or series of assets and making an entire scene. I think maybe even more than the sum of its parts, right? You know, you can make a hundred assets, but when you make a hundred assets and also have to composite them or like compose them into a, into a full scene and do all of your composition and your lighting and your rendering and think about storytelling. These are like whole other extra steps that you don't get to do when you're just creating a single asset. Like, obviously there's a certain amount of storytelling that you can do in anything, but if you're making a full scene, then your your ability to articulate yourself as a, uh, as a kind of narrative artist is so much stronger. So I definitely recommend if you're interested in, uh, in being a 3D artist, in just creating stuff in general, creating images, try to get out of the habit of making single assets. Like obviously that's a very, very useful skill but uh, it's it's one skill and there's a there's a whole lot just it's very valuable basically just make a whole scene and go through the process of coming from like i need to make the assets i need to texture the assets i need to um position them in a way which makes sense and is credible and believable and i need to think about my rendering style and i need to think about my lighting and just all of these extra tasks that you need to go through and you'll find that the work you do by the end of it is much more interesting to you uh, as a creative it's something that you have entirely curated yourself which is yeah very empowering as an artist so definitely that's one of the biggest things i would take away here is that there is there is so much more than just a bit of modeling going on uh, so the next thing I want to say is that Geometry Nodes is a new tool. I see so many people kind of slamming it, being like, oh, the performance isn't all that, or you can't even do things like extrusion, or you can't do, you know, whatever, just insert random bit of 3D jargon here. Like, you, that it's, it is limited, right? And that is because it is a new tool. You can do a lot. I managed to do this whole scene without ever really feeling like, oh, I wish I could just do that as well. Like I was able to position stuff. And I, I mentioned this in the full video, like this is how humans interact with the space around us. We pick stuff up and we put it somewhere else. And this is just how we interact with things. So positioning, like creating a position and instancing an object on it, it's kind of all you need to do. You just need to think about the resolution that you're working to because for example, making the basket or making the table or the flowers. You can have a single object like, I don't know, like an icosphere I used quite extensively, like the entire basket, all the scissors, um, the like the, the shovel handle on the one side. All of these things were just made out of icospheres. They were instanced on positions and you can do this and essentially draw 3D objects in space, kind of like, kind of like sculpting in VR, right? You just sort of positioning blobs of, of massive volume so don't feel restricted by it 
but also I acknowledge that there are a lot of things which it cannot do currently, which will be built in in the future. So just, you know, when it gets compared to Houdini or Cinema 4D, just remember that Geometry Notes is less than a year old. And Houdini, for example, is like, what, 27 or something? Like, it's really old. It's a really mature piece of software compared to Geometry Notes. So give it a little bit of slack. But also don't feel like you're limited because you can't do the process in the same order that you would do it traditionally just you know try and find a new path to get to the same result that's fine be a trailblazer it's it's a good practice and it's also a lot of fun you know making um this is kind of one of the reasons that i've never really got into houdini is because i feel like all of the doors are open you know i could do anything and it's like oh you just you did that process the same as that person or uh, if i don't know something i can just look it up and that's not really so much fun for me. I really like developing tools and developing workflows and geometry nodes being as it is not really having many existing tools and workflows is really exciting for me as somebody who is like, this is now a game and I get to play and I get to try all of these new things and new processes. Um, one that is really relevant to this time lapse, this scene with the flowers I made it almost entirely in the same node tree. Like at, at some point I did have to split off the flowers and make them in their own node trees just so that I could rely on instancing to actually put them all in the basket. However, my sort of initial intention was to put everything in one node tree. And if you've worked with Grasshopper or Houdini or uh, Svirchalk animation nodes, you're probably quite used to making everything in one node graph, right? And just exporting different objects or like pulling out different objects from different points because of the way that geometry nodes works you only ever get one object at the end so the best way to work with it is to generate one object per node tree this is also going to help you a lot with performance issues i was finding towards the end of this especially if i had the boolean nodes uh, so for the table and the twine i for the twine it was just like a cylinder taken out of a cylinder in the middle and the table was like a, a rounded cube with a cube taken off the bottom so that it would give me like a, a nice rounded top edge and a sharp cut off the bottom of the top of the table like the tabletop um so yeah with things plugged in and even without them plugged in the performance was really hard going like it I had some feedback towards the end from Dre's about my composition and about how I could like rotate it and make it a little bit more dynamic and kind of draw the viewer in a little bit and make sure that your eyes, something really important with uh, with composition is that you make sure that your, your audience's eyes don't leave the image because that's like a real no-go. It's good if you can like bring them around the image and then to rest on your final position. Um, however, my composition I, I, I like it, I think it's good, and I think the lighting makes up for a lot of the uh, the issues with my composition. However, there were some improvements and Dre's picked them up and he was like, oh, you could just do this, rotate the camera, and make sure that you've got a little bit more leading lines. And I tried it and basically the performance was prohibitive. I couldn't make the changes that I wanted to make because it was like so late in the process and the performance was already taking a big hit. If you were to use a workflow where, for example, the flowers are in their own node tree and then maybe you have a basket with the flowers attached in another node tree and then like the, the twine is in a node tree and the buckets are in a node tree and the tabletop with the blanket is in another node tree. You know, basically split it all up. Then you can do things like moving in 3D space, which is like such a novelty when you're used to working with nodes because everything I was having to do was just like you know, the best thing I could do was to add an empty and use the empty in my node tree to drive the position on a, sorry, the, the uh, translation on a transform node. But again, that was a performance issue, right? I was having loads of issues with that. I was trying it with the fox gloves and then if you want to move something, but then if you want to like tweak something's position and then you want to move it again, it's just, it's not very easy to do. You start getting like all of these relative offsets and it's a bit of a pain. So yeah, just split it up. Make sure you can move things, rotate things in 3D. You know, utilize the rest of Blender. It's not just geometry nodes. And actually that lets me segue onto my next point, which is that 
Blender is more than just geometry notes. There are so many things which I did here which were impractical. And if I was hiring somebody and we were working in like 3D production and they were doing all of this stuff in a node tree, they'd be out the door, I'd fire them because it's pointless. You know, there's, there's no reason to make a blanket like this when we have perfectly good cloth sims. Or even, you know, the extent of this blanket, I could have just taken a grid and like folded it, like literally just rotated part of it manually rather than having to use nodes to like fold it in a kind of awkward way. There's a lot of strengths of geometry nodes, obviously scattering, uh, doing the flowers is so easy with geometry nodes and uh, scattering petals is so easy with geometry nodes. And um, there is a lot of stuff that is really powerful in geometry nodes already. And there's a, I'm really glad that I did this process because I have learned how to take geometry nodes in its current state and start working with it in my workplace because I've, I've forced it into all of these random settings that you would never really do. If, like, if I was just making this scene for myself, I would have used the rest of Blender. I would have done other things with other tools in Blender. But then I might not have come to the conclusions of being like, oh, I can do this thing or um, actually this is way easier than I was expecting, like doing the flowers, for example, I was thinking that would be quite difficult, but then um, just using the file taxes node, right? I have my tool set, my toolkit, because it has presets which I use frequently and which empower me to make decisions in a much more rapid way rather than thinking, oh, I wonder how I could do that and then spending two hours making a tool to do it. Now I can think, oh, I wonder if I could do that and then I just add the node, right? And it's like, it's as easy as adding any other node. So yeah, there's a lot of strengths to geometry nodes, but don't feel restricted that like you have to use geometry nodes for everything. Um, and also don't use, don't do everything in one tree. Because for example, okay, if I had made the blanket with a cloth sim and I had hang, hung it over the edge of a table and I wanted to like compress the part that was around the basket to make it look like it was being weighed down, um, I could still do that, right? I could take my blanket with its baked off cloth sim, add geometry nodes modifier, um, use an object info node to bring in my basket object without actually like having the whole node tree there. I could just bring in the basket object, do my attribute proximity and, and flatten it in the set according to um, the distance from the basket. Equally for the petals, I could have generated a petals object, object, right? Um, and then used, I don't know, either object info nodes or a collection info node, depending on how I had my hierarchies arranged. And then I could have deposited petals on all of these things where they should have gone without needing it to all be in the same node tree. So it seems a bit in, um, unintuitive. And I know this is like a common complaint with geometry nodes that we have sort of unintuitive workflows with the attributes. However, there are ways to like get away from using them. You know, if you, if you split it up properly and you use the hierarchy and you think about modeling stuff in Blender more like how we, how we do normally, how we have, um, how we have multiple objects for multiple things and it makes it easier for us to use materials and it makes it easier for us to do transforms and use other modifiers. Like I was not able to, I don't know, if I were to take my basket, then if I'd done it as a unique object, then I may have used a remesh modifier after it to sort of consolidate all of the, the, uh, the icospheres. In this case, I couldn't. And also because it was a painterly style that I wanted having a repeated motif of like icospheres, things like this, because of the way they catch the light and they give you these sort of brushy arrays of things. It worked well from a stylistic point of view. However, from a flexible modeling, just being a 3D generalist point of view, doing things in their own unique no trees is just, it's going to help you. Yeah, it's just going to help you. Um, so coming back to my toolkit, that was really what enabled me to do all of the work here. Like there are some shader nodes in here as well that I use a lot like the basher and the blended tiling. And I will link to those down in the description as well because they're very useful for shaders. However, for the 
actual geometry nodes and obviously I'll link to the geometry nodes toolkit as well. Um, for the toolkit, having the fire taxis node, having the spy reception, the spirograph nodes, having the vector rotate nodes, all of these things basically allowed me to have creative freedom. So what I'm trying to say is be, be conscious of your workflows and make sure that as you work through you're just being uh, you're keeping an eye out for things that you do repeatedly because you will find that there are processes that you go through whether that's adding like attribute randomized nodes i don't know so one of the node groups for example that i use a lot is the uh, the rock scale node and what this is is a single node that has a bipolar transform which basically means that if i increase the value then it will go positive and negative um, so basically it will increase the range. So for rotation, it will randomize between, like if I was to put in pi radians in my Z rotation, then it would randomize the rotation between minus pi and positive pi. So that's what I mean by bipolar. Um, but what I was finding is that when I was doing foliage, especially for the stuff like for grass or flowers and things like this, I would want to have a fully randomized Z, uh, Z rotation and a fully randomized scale so i'd want it to be like an even scaling like float scaling between like 0.8 and 1.2 and i'd want my randomization and my z rotation to be like between minus pi and positive pi so i just made a note that did that because i was doing this over and over again and i was rewriting attributes all the time and it was becoming a real pain and so just be cognizant of the processes that you go through repeatedly and you can create node groups Create yourself a tool set of nodes that you can use repeatedly and that are going to really save you time in the long run because geometry nodes is developing and we haven't got the high level tools yet. Uh, so the final thing that I just want to say, playing, playing is the best way for you to learn because it's going to kind of open your mind to just trying stuff out. So sit down, give yourself a little project and just entertain yourself, play with geometry nodes until you find processes which you enjoy doing. That's all for me, thanks for watching, hope this was useful and informative and I will catch you in the next one.